In today's video, we're going to talk a little bit about these solar panels and why you may want to choose one over the other and also a little bit about pricing and which might be better for you guys starting now. So we'll start with this one first. This is a 335 watt LG panel. The one that we have next to it is from Renogy. It's a 100 watt panel. And then these three right here are all 100 watts and they're from Harbor Freight. Then we have a Bluetti foldable portable 200 watt solar panel. And then also this one from XStar, which is a 100 watt foldable and portable solar panel. Now, when we look at these big ones back here, these are the large solar panels you'll see on a roof. These are residential solar panels that you basically will see on homes, businesses, and more. And these are great because they can be used in a lot of other places. So just because they mean residential doesn't mean you can't use them because as long as it fits your project, then you'll be able to utilize these as long as you have a little information on how you wanna build it. So you can put these on top of maybe an outside shed such as this and fit maybe a couple on there or even your RV you can actually put about two of these on top of mine, but that's really about it. So it might actually be better to use a smaller panel so I can put more solar up here and put a bunch of 200 watts on this run. So it just depends on your build, but it is cheaper and a lot easier to install one big panel like this than it is to actually install one, two, three of these 100 watt panels, which take a lot more time for installation than just doing one big panel if your project allows it. And you can find those big panels used and save a bunch of money versus buying these ones all brand new from say Harbor Freight, or if you want the Renogy panel that you would pick up on Amazon, but they all have a purpose depending on what your build is. Like these ones here, you can put a bunch more of these on top of that shed I showed you, or you can utilize these as well and make a solar suitcase. It just kind of depends on your project. And uh, Renogy runs about $100. These Harbor Freighter about 120, but you can pick them up under 100 with a coupon when they happen to have their super sales. And they also have legs on the back to help them stand up when they're sitting out. Kind of like this Blue Eddy 200 watt solar panel. This one will fold up into basically one of those squares or like this 100 watt X-Star panel. This one here, also folds up to half its size so it's great for portability and it doesn't take up a lot of room and if you need to chase the sun which if you happen to have your vehicle parked in the shade it's not going to get any power kind of like when i park my rv sometimes i'm in the shade to keep it cool but i'll use this auxiliary input that way i can kind of chase the sun with a portable solar panel so i'll plug it into here get about a 20 foot extension and then i can move the solar panel where i need to that way i'm always getting power to the batteries inside my trailer and i don't have to worry about stuff dying if i happen to be out camping and i'm always getting power to it so that's why these small solar panels are great because they don't take up a lot of room they're easy to store and you can pretty much fold them and deploy them almost with one hand i can pick this up fold it and now it's pretty much ready to go and throw into the back of the truck because it's just velcro and magnets that hold it together and all of your cables are contained inside that pouch the only problem with these is that that panel is about 289 dollars and the blue eddy one's about 450 so they're a lot more expensive than the rigid solar panels that you'll see in the back but they do have a purpose it just depends on also your budget now I did just happen to get this while I was making the video. I got this delivered, which I'll be testing pretty soon. But it's always better to try to budget for more solar if you can, because even under optimal conditions, when you're charging up power stations such as this or lithium batteries, this particular unit can handle 400 watts, but it's 0%, it'll take four hours to go to 100%, which that means it has to be under ideal conditions like clear skies and also cooler temps. I hope this video helped you out a little bit. If you wanna learn more about solar, check out this video right here, or lithium batteries and inverters, check out this video right here.